Well, good morning and welcome to the Lady Grove Church's Thought for Today. As you may have picked up if you've been doing the last couple of YouTube links, um, the church is doing the Bible Society's Bible course. We started it off both on Monday and Tuesday, uh, and yeah, I think we're enjoying it. Um, and each, each week we're encouraged to read short passages of the Bible in preparation for the following week's session. And not surprisingly, as it's the start of the course, we're looking at the book of Genesis. And my reading today was Genesis 3, the, um, the fall of humanity, where Adam and Eve eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it got me thinking again, because there was Adam when God called him out and asked him what he'd been up to. He points the finger away from himself and towards Eve. It wasn't me, it was that woman that you put in with me. So it's certainly not my fault, God. It could be yours or it could be the woman's. And then, of course, the, God, the woman points to the snake and says, it's not my fault, it's down to him. And uh, sorry about the joke, but uh, the snake hasn't got a leg to stand on and has to acknowledge that he is at fault. And here we are, millennia on, but not really, a lot has changed, has it? We still find that people point the finger elsewhere, trying to bounce the blame onto other people rather than themselves. We, have, we hear so many empty words where we might suggest that we're empathetic with a situation, but we certainly aren't going to use the word sorry or I apologise because that might mean the blame lands at my feet. We have journalists asking what they seem to think are our clever questions, trying to get someone trapped into a corner where they've got to acknowledge their fault, and then we watch as the person who has got to answer that question doesn't answer it, but either cuts it off or goes off on a complete different tangent. We've even created our own language to almost um, avoid blame. I mean, where did the word misspeaking come from? I misspoke, I hear quite often. What on earth does that mean and where does that come from? What a difference that is to the way that we see in the Bible. And I was going to read a passage from one of the Psalms, Psalm 51. This is a Psalm that David wrote following his encounter with Nathan the prophet when Nathan challenged him about his adultery with Bathsheba and his scheme to ensure the death of Bathsheba's husband Uriah and this is what David writes have mercy on me O God because of your unfailing love because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin. For I recognise my shameful deeds, they haunt me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be, pro you will be proved right in what you say, and your judgement against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the heart, so you can teach me to be wise in my inmost being. Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins, remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me again the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to sinners, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that I may praise you. You would not be pleased with sacrifices, or I would bring them. 
If I brought you a burnt offering, you would not accept it. The sacrifice you want is a broken spirit, a broken and repentant heart, O God, you will not despise. Look with favour on Zion and help her rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with worthy sacrifices and with our whole burnt offerings, and bulls will again be sacrificed on your altar. Please excuse the noise in the background, we've got the window cleaners just come round. Um, Elton John, of course, sang a song a few years, maybe a decade ago. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. And he's right. He starts off that song, what have I got to do to make you love me? What have I got to do to make you care? And the answer is say sorry. Because when we come and say sorry, when we repent, when we confess our sins, we get back to reality. We recognise that actually any pedestal that we might be trying to build and climb upon is just empty. We are all sinners, just like David. The amazing thing is that despite the fact there it is in black and white in scripture, David himself actually acknowledging that he has been a sinner from birth. He is regarded as the supreme king of the Israelite nation, described as a man after God's own heart. Because he was honest, he recognised his faults and said sorry for them. When we come to confession, we have the opportunity, like David, of putting things right, of wiping them clean, or having them wiped clean by Christ's death and resurrection, and starting again. When we try to avoid blame, when we try and point fingers elsewhere, then they'll come back to haunt us again and again and again, as we see at the moment. So may I encourage each one of us to come to God each day and to acknowledge that like David, we are broken, fallen human beings that need to seek his forgiveness daily. Let's pray. So Lord God, in this time where we are facing challenges we've never experienced before, it's pretty obvious that all of us are going to make mistakes. And some of those mistakes will have big or lasting consequences. Lord, may we learn from David's humble attitude. May we come to you and seek your forgiveness. And so, Father, we are sorry for those things that we have said or done or thought that have not been pleasing to you. And equally, we are sorry for the times when we've ignored your prompting and not offered words or actions that would have built people up and helped them. Lord, we thank you that your Son died on the cross for each of our sins and that we can come to you like David and know that we will be washed clean like snow. And today is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. A celebration that was started when an American politician threw his hands up in horror at a horrendous oil spillage in the US. And Lord, we're just conscious that we haven't looked after this world. And thank you that in some ways the COVID-19 virus has at least stopped us using so much fossil fuel and has improved the air quality. And Lord, we pray that you would help, help each one of us to recognise the part that we play in either 
helping this world to survive or causing it further damage. And Lord, we continue to pray for our health service, for all those who are supporting or hopefully bringing healing to those who are ill or vulnerable. And Lord, we pray for our people involved in the food chain, those who grow, those who deliver, those who stack shelves, those at um, the checkouts. Let's pray for your safety for all people. And Lord, we pray for the politicians of this world. We thank you for those who have really grasped the nettle and are helping their countries to gradually get back on their feet. But we pray for wisdom and understanding. We pray that people will be influenced by what they actually see around them. And if they can't see it, that they will seek out the answers rather than simply be guided by, by decrees from on high. And let's just spend a moment in quiet as we live before God, those things particularly on our hearts and minds at this time. So loving Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can come to you and bring our concerns and needs and celebrations to you. Pray that you would use our prayers to further your kingdom and bless this world. And so we close with the Lord's Prayer as we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. So I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care in the meantime. Look after yourself and look for opportunities to bless other people around you. See you soon.